Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, we're gonna do a slightly longer video today as we're gonna discuss all the variants and one of the newer master sets, which is Double Masters uh, 2022, or Quad Masters, or however you call it. Um, today, every set has so many variants that if you wanna be a completionist or go for a master set, you really need multiple binders. For me here, I need three. Uh, one for the regular set and non-foil, one for the foil set, which we'll review in just like a minute or so, and then one for all the variants. Um, this gets crazy expensive. Uh, it's a journey, and is it honestly worth it is the question. Is it fun? At what point do, do you see the point um, in going for full sets or, um, or master sets is, uh, is what I'd like to try and show today. So thanks for being with me. I'm going to do that top five, uh, which is the same for the foil and the non-foils. So for a while, ever since we had the collector booster box, um, all the foils have very little premium, so foils are not special in any way. These are our five most expensive cards of the set. We have uh, Imperial Seal and uh, Imperial Seal at $80, Dockside Extortionist at $70, Cavern of Souls at $60, Renan 6 at $50, and Mana Vault at $45. And I'm just going to give you, I'm going to tell you that right now it's the exact same cards in the exact same order in foil. And you'll see how small the price difference is. The non-foil version for Imperial Seal is 80 bucks. The foil version is at 90. Uh, for Dockside, it's at 80 in foil, 65 in foil, 61 in foil, and 55 in foil. It's uh, it, it, there's a tiny premium for getting them in foil, yet they're equally hard to pull or uh, still fairly hard to get. It's fun for me to see some of these awesome cards, you know, like Avicen Angel of Hope, uh, Karn, or the Archangel of Thune. It's just so many reprints, all of these important cards, a, an absurd price point. Stoneforge Mystic, which is beautiful. I mean, you know, in Path of Exile, a lot of these cards are awesome. I, I don't know what else to say. They're, these are wonderful cards to, to play with and to have, but the price is just absurd. It, it, it doesn't make sense to, <laughs> and Jace the Mind Sculptor. If they want to keep making product this expensive and having 150 variants for all, it would just be better to retire them and create new expensive cards. It, it would make so much more sense to have a new reserve list and keep all products at a, at, at a normal and affordable price for everyone. And we could all enjoy watching our cards go up in price over time as um, and, and let them appreciate instead of having these absurd reprint sets that go for an absurd amount of money um, and then only tank. Like it's almost impossible to to get your, val your value back. Like if you buy a draft or collect a booster, which are both for this set around $300, Blood Moon, which I love seeing. This has always been a beautiful card. It's always seen a lot of play. It's always been iconic. And due to, what, five, six reprints? It's what, staying? It's never really going to climb and climb. It's, it's a bit of a shame. I wish um, a doubling season has been printed, what, three times now? Uh, I believe it was Ravnica. The original one, Ravnica City of Guilds, and then uh, Battle Bond, and then um, Double Masters. It may have done, yeah, maybe another time. Three or four times. It's a beautiful card. 
But yeah, no, also completing these sets is very difficult. <laughs> 332 cards, they're massive. Everything you pull is, um, is very random. Yes, you do get two rares and two foils. It, it doesn't change that you still need to spend a lot of money to complete them. And as the professor and many other people say, and even me who loves, I love to crack uh, packs and open booster packs and, and um, buy collective booster boxes and all that stuff, but it's just not worth it anymore. It's, um, it's, it's a bit sad. I'm sorry for not being all hyped up today. It's just kind of the reality of it that if you want to get every card and it also to make sense financially, you have to just buy singles. It's true. And it's, it's a real shame that, um, that Wizards of the Coast doesn't want to um, incentivize collectors, players, uh, set collectors, anyone to just kind of buy their product, either sit on them, crack them. It's just, yeah, it's become very different. We've seen Lightning Greaves uh, that's been reprinted a hundred times still actually go up in price and be around, what, uh, eight or nine dollars at the moment, which is pretty, I think, amazing. Uh, one of the things I probably enjoyed the most out of this set is that it had um, four swords. I love these. They are... Um, we, they're, to me, very iconic of just Magic the Gathering in general, even though they're not that, that old. I think the first one came in Scars of Meriden, if I'm not completely mistaken. We have the Sword of Body and Mind, Feast and Famine, Fire, Ice, and Light and Shadow. I'm assuming in probably one of these next Master sets we, we get, maybe not Commander Masters, but the following one will have all ten swords which would be really, really fun. But, uh, and in special art, Walking Ballista, very played and beautiful. I'm going a little fast as I'm turning the pages on these because we still have to go over every variant. And trust me, there are so many. These are the lands, um, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. These are the lands from Unhinged and Foil which are gorgeous and they're reprinted in these pro this product and one, two, three, four, five are from Zendikar, the original. And these were the buy a box or um, pre-release cards. Oh, and then we have all the tokens. We're 31 tokens. Let me know if you also collect the tokens for all the cards and how you feel about reprint sets. All right, on to binder number three. And so for this, now we get to look at all of the non-foil altars before we get into the foil and then the um, um, textured foils, foil etched, borderless, it's never ending. It doesn't change that the art is gorgeous. I, I don't know what else to say. They're beautiful. I mean, Chaos Warp to me is really fun. Unearth, Mana Drain. But still, they don't justify the price. And that's why I believe they started creating the um, serialized cards because um, if you don't kind of make it a lottery, it's just not worth it anymore. The serialized cards are the only thing, I guess, keeping certain investors or collectors from really buying those collector packs, but it just makes the game a lottery. It doesn't make it a, um, a collectible. It doesn't make it very fun. It means that you only are able to, and again, with extreme amounts of luck, be able to turn a profit if you open huge amounts of product and get, I don't know, your thousand or two thousand dollar card. But yes, other than that, 
this set has amazing art. Now we're into the foils. I'm, I love seeing the Eldrazi wherever they reprint them. I'll always love seeing them. Emrakul, Kozilek, and Ulamog are amazing, and I'm excited for the Commander Masters one coming out uh, in a couple months. Um, it's going to be great. I'm happy to see that next. Uh, well, I'm excited for the Commander decks because they're bringing new new commanders that have never been seen before. Commander Masters itself, I'm not so excited about. about. Um, do we have any of these cards that are in the most expensive? Yes, we do. Imperial Seal, Borderless Foil, actually. This card is um, is worth $100. So this would be a very nice pull. So would Dockside Extortionist. However, it's not even in our top six. Richard Kane Ferguson art. Stunning, nice, special. And then this card's probably, I don't know, 12, 12 to $20. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Maldratha, stunning. Yargle hadn't bargained on her showing up. Yeah, you bet. Yargle is a lot of fun. I liked seeing his um, his uh, team-up card with Multani in uh, March of the Machines. Uh, right now, a lot of us are opening March of the Machines Aftermath. I may do a box opening at some point, not sure. Let me know if you'd like to see something different than just reviewing some of these sets. For me... You know, obviously, yeah, Cavern of Souls is, is special because of uh, Avacyn Restored. And obviously, it's a very expensive card. But to me, City of Brass has always been one of my absolute favorite cards ever. And it's uh, it's pleasant to see it in a different uh, different art. We also, yeah, there's there's a few different arts for City of Brass. And now we enter the foil etched realm. Uh, and in the foil etched realm, yep, there are quite a few of these cards that do command a fairly high premium. Love seeing these Eldrazi in this way. The first time we saw the foil etched was with the original Commander Masters, I believe. Commander Legends, sorry. Commander Legends, we got to see a lot of beautiful legends um, in this foil edged form, which is fairly, which is still different than actually the, the, I should put them next to each other for comparison so that you can see Mana Drain in its original art. Imperial Seal is actually the second most expensive card in this entire set. It's at $140. And the one card most expensive you'd actually be surprised to know, if you don't already, is that it's Dockside Extortionist. Funny enough, Dockside Extortionist is the most expensive card in this entire set. Even though they only have five textured foils, some of those are relatively cheap. At, like I think you can get an Emrakul for like $30 or so. Um, so yes, it's uh, Foil Etch, Dockside, Imperial Seal, and Mana Vault are our top three cards in, in the set to look at. Grand Arbiter Augustus IV, Augustine IV in Dissension. We should go over Dissension soon. I'd like to do that set with you. Um, because the original Ravnica block is obviously, you know, special to a lot of us who either played or started at that moment. And we see so many of these cards that we grew up with at some point or the other. Some are newer, some are older. I like seeing Marchesa the Black Rose. She was in Conspiracy, which is one of the first sets that I completed in its entirety ever. Nicol Bolas, if you started in the Amonkhet era. Maldratha for 
um, Dominaria, Master of Cruelties for the um, Ravnica Dragon's Maze, <laughs> Mayel, Mayel's Aria from the Shards of Alara block, Supreme Verdict. Again, a lot of these are fun, important, and great reprints. However, the product is just way too too expensive to um, to make it worth it. Unfortunately, Crucible of Worlds, awesome card. Love to see it. And Mana Vault which is right here at $105 in its foil etched version. We're almost done, my friends. We will get to the textured foil at the very end. <laughs> Cavernous Souls and City Brass, which I love. And here are the five, um, our five textured foils. The most expensive by far being Renan 6. Let me take it out of its sleeve. Maybe we can see something a bit different on camera. Can you tell something? Anyways, you can tell from the collector number 574. Uh, this is the third most expensive card. It's at $130. And then you'll have for and then you'll have Kozilek at $95. Same thing. You can't really tell that they're textures. You, you can't even feel it that much. But they are. And there you go. Um, I hope you're okay with me being a little bit negative sometimes as I, as I share my opinions on, on set collecting. I've been doing this for a very long time and um, and as much as it makes me happy to complete all of these sets and put them all together, I still sometimes get a lot, a big deal of resentment towards Wizards of the Coast or Hasbro when, when it feels like they just want to abuse you or just take your money in any way and kind of spit in your face. So, um, so I would love to hear your opinions on uh, on the need or not for a new reserve list or the need for prices to be more, I guess, commonly affordable. And, um, and yeah, I thank you for staying with me today for this long. If you made it to 18 minutes, I guess, uh, hashtag mimoplasm or something like that. Have a great day. I know I made a little mistake. So let me add this at the end of the video. Um, I did double masters. 2022 sorry double masters and double masters 2022 um if you're not screaming at me in the comments already let me just add uh all the variants um for the first double masters where we get to have a look at the chrome Mox, atraxa doubling season that way it's a set review for the two of them, which I will title the video that way. I happened to make a big mistake where I mislabeled the binders, actually. And here we see the beautiful swords together, plus the Mox Opal and Mana Crypt. I will also fix the, um, the top five for this and note it in the description. But yes, Ian Karn Liberated and Jace, my, my opinion, sorry, on, on these things don't change, actually. I still think that reprints, this many reprints really damages um, the card game, its reputation, and the company, and does not um, benefit the player in any way. Sure, you get cheaper cards right now, 
but when you return to the game or whenever you decide to sell your cards and start a new deck, you'll realize that you spent thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars to complete your deck and that they're um, almost worthless or worth about a third or a fourth of the price you paid to get them by the time you sell them and try to get something new. Whilst if they were retired, they would keep the same price or go up in value and you would be able to um, to trade up and have savings and, you know, keep recycling decks and, and not lose um, large amounts of money every time you want to change your deck. And same thing, the art on them is, is truly stunning. If someone in the comments happens to say you mixed up Double Masters and Double Masters 2022, I fully agree with you. I did, however, review both of them in this video and going over all the variants here. Um, so you would have to have stayed till the very end <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then you can yell at me. I do deserve this mistake. That was on me. I should have paid attention some more. The logos are very similar. Or, yeah, very similar to me. Which has a fairly trained eye on these things. But yes, there we go. And then the beautiful Tron lands to uh, close our set. Uh, I apologize for the extra four minutes. I will either make this as a second video um, that I'll publish immediately, or I'll try to edit it and attach it. Um, so there you go. <laughs> Thanks again, guys.